Hey, what's up guys, it's Yvonne. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to track form submits with Google Tag Manager. Now there are two ways to do it. The first way is via the thank you page URL. And the second way is via the form submission trigger, which is especially useful if someone stays on the same page after filling out your form. Now, this is actually part of my training course, which you can learn more about at ivanmana.com. That said, let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're ready to start creating events. So for the first event, what we want to do is measure how many people sign up to our landing page and land on the thank you page. So we want to set it up in Google Tag Manager so that it sends that data off to Google Analytics and we will be able to tell how many people signed up on our landing page. So let's go back here, let's click on dashboard and let's open up our landing page so that we can get the URL of the landing and the thank you page. Let's go to landing pages. And what I'm gonna do is just preview these. I'm gonna control click so it opens in a new tab. And we just need the URLs for the thank you page and the landing page. So let's put them in order. So we wanna measure how many people sign up to this, right? So for this event, we're gonna be using URL-based tracking. That means when somebody lands on this page, on this URL, we want that pixel to fire and to send off the data to Google Analytics. So using URLs is gonna be one of the most common and the easiest ways that you will utilize once you get more familiar with Google Tag Manager for setting up the different events. If you wanna track purchases, if you wanna track upsells, downsells, you can use the URLs. So the way this works is the only way somebody can land on this page, the only way is if they sign up to this list, right? So if they click on full name and email, they will land on this page. And by the way, that's something we should perhaps specify because we didn't do that here, but that's basically the process. So if somebody signs up, they land on the thank you page and we're gonna say that, hey, if somebody lands on this page, we want the tag to fire. So the first thing I wanna do here is let's just go back and let's make it work that way so that we can test it after. So on this Elementor form, let's click the form and let's say actions after submit, we want to redirect people. Where's the redirect option right here? So we're gonna select redirect and we're gonna say, hey, we wanna take people to this thank you page, right? We will be changing this throughout the module as we test and set up different tags so that you will see how they all work. But for this one, this is the general one that most of the landing pages and sales pages and so on have. So that's what we're gonna have. So now whenever somebody signs up to this page, they will land on the thank you page. So in Google Tag Manager, we're gonna click on tags. We're gonna click on create new tag. You don't have to create triggers and variables separately. You can create them all in here under the tags option right there. So let's name this, let's say lead gen or lead generation. So I'm hesitant to use the word sign up just because if you have a membership site or some sort of account that people have to sign up to, we don't wanna confuse that with lead gen, right? With people that sign up to your landing page. So we're gonna select here. We're gonna click on Google Analytics. We wanna send the event. We're gonna enter the measurement ID that we've already set, super, super easy. And then we're gonna give it a name. Now, what name should we set? You can set any name you like. You can say lead gen, you can say sign up, you can say person who signed up on my page, whatever you want. But Google Analytics has a list of recommended events that integrate very well with Google Analytics so that it already pre-populates with the data that you're usually looking for. So if you hover over this little question mark and click on learn more, you will see all the recommended events they have. So they have a lot of them, online sales, lead gen, games, whatever it is. So for lead generation, we're looking for something like this, generate lead, right? Somebody that submits a form. So this is what we can use. But again, you can type in whatever you like. If we come here, so let's click that again. So if we type in sign up incorrectly, that'll work. And this is the event that's gonna show up in Google Analytics. But we wanna have it all nice and integrated, have as many capabilities as possible without needing to do any extra work. So we're just gonna write their default, which is generate lead. Now, sometimes you wanna pass additional parameters. So this isn't as important for leads because it's just a lead. We just need to count how many. But if you, for example, wanna track purchases or sales, then you wanna see also the currency, right? You wanna see the value. How much is that purchase worth? Something like that. So let's go over here and when you click on this generate lead or on any specific event, they will tell you what the required parameters are. So for this one, the required parameters, it says are currency and value. Now there's an asterisk next to them. So that means that, for example, for the currency, if you set a value, then a currency is required, which means if you don't set a value, the currency is not required. 
For the value, if there is no monetary value for the event, such as a lead signup, then you don't have to put that in. So these two aren't as much required as they are recommended if there is a monetary value associated with your product. And in our case, there isn't. It's just a lead. However, you could, of course, work backwards and you could say, for example, if it takes you 10 leads to make a sale and that sale is worth $100, then you divide 100 by 10 and that means each lead is worth $10. So in that case, you could work backwards and you would put a value. So if that's something you want to do, then you would just come in here and you would add the event parameters. So you would click on add new parameter and then you would say, for example, value, and then you would enter the value. Each lead is $10, for example, but that's not accurate in this case. We just want to track how many people signed up. So we're just going to get rid of that. So that's it for the tag configuration. Now we need to add the trigger when do we want this tag to fire? And we want it to fire when people land on the thank you page, right? So let's close out of this stuff. Let's come back here. Let's click on trigger. So it's not going to be any of these. It's definitely not all pages. So we have to click on add new. And here we have to say, thank you, sign up, as opposed to thank you purchase, for example. So we can come in here and we can say page view. So again, this is going to be the most common trigger type that you're going to be setting just because it's so easy to set up. And most of the events that you're going to be tracking have to do with some sort of URL redirections. So we're not setting page views. We're setting some pages. And then here we need to set the variable. So the variable is going to be page URL. And we're going to say contains. That's fine. Not starts with. Let's say contains. And then we come back here and we can either take just that part of it, just this whole thing, or we could just say thank you, for example. Now, the complication with just using thank you is that if you end up having another thank you page, for example, a purchase thank you page that also has this thank you, then it's not going to be accurate tracking, right? Because now it's going to be tracking as a generate lead, people that sign up to your book and people that buy. So you want to make it as specific as possible. So we're just going to say this, for example, we're going to come back here. As you can see here, it has that slash at the end. That means that that is it for this part. Nothing else can be added after that dash because there's a slash here. So we're going to click save here. And we're going to hit save again. And congratulations, we've set up our lead gen event. But of course, we want to check it, right? So we want to check it in Google Tag Manager. So let's preview. And let's enter this page. Just the main landing page. Let's come back here. Let's connect and let's see if this works. So we're going to enter a random name and email. We're going to click sign up now and then we'll be redirected to the thank you page. So thanks for signing up. And now let's see if that's been tracked. So boom, right? So we see that on the lead gen page. Now we want to make sure that that's on the thank you page, not on the landing page. We don't want to see this lead gen on the landing page. So when Content is loaded here, container loaded. We only see the Google Analytics tag. We don't see the Legion tag. And that's exactly what we want. We don't want to show up an event when somebody lands on the landing page. We want to show up an event when somebody signs up. So here you can see the thank you page summary and then the landing page summary. So if we go to a container loaded, you see here both of them were fired. So that's perfect. So let's just hit submit and let's finish this lesson with a nice name here. So let's say lead gen, what can we say? Lead gen submit. Then we can hit publish. And there you go. So we have a good list of everything that we're doing so far. It looks pretty nice. So there will be situations when the process isn't as straightforward. You can't just enter the URL because sometimes people stay on the same URL after filling in a form. So for example, if we go back to our WordPress landing page, if we go back to the landing page, and this is what I was telling you when I said we're going to be rearranging these things here and there. So if we go to edit with Elementor, sometimes people don't go to the next page. Sometimes there's just a success message that says congratulations or thanks for filling in the form or whatnot, right? Actually, let's go to, let's go to a different page. Let's leave that as is. Let's go to our you know what? Let's go to our contact us page. And let's suppose we want to track how many people filled in the contact form. So let's edit this page. So for this page, people aren't redirected anywhere, right? There's just a success message that says, hey, thanks for reaching out. So how do you track that? How do you track this form? So that's what I'm going to be showing you here how to do in this video. So let's come back into Google Tag Manager. Let's click on tags. Once again, we don't need to add any triggers or variables. We can just do that within the tag as we created. So let's click on you over here. Let's give it a name. This one's going to be the contact us form. 
submit. And so let's configure the tag. Who do we want to communicate this with? Well, Google Analytics. So we're going to select that, Google Analytics here. Let's set up a measurement ID. The event name, we're going to say, for example, contact us form. Okay, so this is a little different than the generate lead. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly the event name that Google recommends, because as long as we see this event inside of Google Analytics, that's all that's going to matter. So contact us form. We don't want any additional parameters. It is just a form. There is no values or currency associated with it. So we're good for the tag configuration, but now we have to sort with the trigger. When will this trigger? So we can use here the form submission trigger, which is a default here. So we can come in here, we can say form. This is the contact us form complete. And then we can click on trigger and then we can scroll down until we find form submission right over there. And then we don't want this to be on all forms. We want this to be on some forms. Which ones? Well, this is how we have to specify. So we have to specify which exact form are we talking about because we might have different forms on the page. So let's go back here and we have to click on this element, scroll down, go to additional options, and there's going to be a form ID. Now, depending on what you're using, you might not be using WordPress, you might be using something else. There will generally be a form ID attached to your form. So if you use the developer tools, if you right click and inspect element, well, not in this editor, but when you preview a page, if you right click and inspect element, you should see the form ID. So I'm going to show you how to access that as well. But with Elementor, it's super, super easy. It's really simplified. So we can come in here and we can just give this a name. So we can name this contact us form. So that's the name of this specific form, right? It's a form ID. It's like a name. So we're going to publish this. Let's go back to Google Tag Manager. Let's look for form ID. Okay, so we don't have the variable for form ID. Okay, so that means we need to choose a built-in variable. So we're going to come in here. And actually, let's do something easier. Let's discard the changes. Let's save what we have. Let's just save the tag. And let's come back into variables. And we first have to add the form ID content. So we can add all of these. The main one we need is form ID. Nothing else really matters, but we can just have that. So now we can come back to our tags and let's finish this. So we said contact us form submit. Let's come back here. And this is going to be form submission for some forms. And now we should be able to find the form ID. Form ID contains that, right? And then here we can say contact us form submit. So that's the trigger. We're going to hit save. And so here we're going to hit save. And so now that should be working. So now whenever we complete this form, we should have this data sent off to Google Analytics. So if we preview and we grab this URL, come back here, connect it. So now if we scroll down, we enter some details. We submit form. Notice it just has the little message. There's nothing else. So let's come back here and see what happens. So if we go to the message or the form submit one right over here, we'll see that the tag has been fired, the contact us form. And if we go into variables, we're going to see all these tags, including the variable that we added, which was the form ID. If we come to the bottom, form ID right over here. Now, if you aren't using Elementor, if you weren't able to enter that form ID, then you'll be able to find the form ID here. If you can't find the form ID here, then what you would do is you would come back to this page and let's close out of that. All of that works well. We can check Google Analytics as well. But then what you could do is you could come in here and you can inspect and you could select this form. Let's try that again. So that's going to be, we want to select the whole form right there. And then we're just going to have to go through these values over here. And we have to see if we can find the form ID. So it says here, form class is Elementor form right there. And then form ID, contact us form. So if you're not using Elementor and you want to know what the form ID was, if you can't edit it, then it's going to be right here. So it's contact us full and then, right. So you just click that and copy that. And then that you would be able to plug into your Google Tag Manager and that would be your form ID. So hopefully that makes sense. So now that we've checked that everything's working well, let's come in and submit and let's give this a name. So form 
submission. Let's be more specific. Let's say contact us form submission. We'll click publish. And there you go. So again, everything is nice and tidy. We see all the changes here. And that is all for this video. Hopefully you found value and are now able to track form submits with Google Tag Manager. Once again, I invite you to check out my website at ivanmana.com where you can learn more details about the full course where I cover the A to Z of marketing online. Everything from building a website to email marketing to paid ads to conversion rate optimization and conversion tracking as was shown in this video. That is all. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.